Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponder on Weather coming at you with another update. In this update, we're going to be talking about a dynamic weather pattern that will bring a snowstorm and severe weather. So before I do get started, if you do like weather related content, please subscribe to my channel as I will upload daily updates to keep you ahead of the storm. And I do ask you to share this video with your friends and family on social media. All right, so let's get started. Let's first of all, welcome you to the first day of spring, March the 20th. And you can see the snow that's happened uh, this winter uh, across the United States. Uh, we had a lot of snow back here into Texas, a good chunk in, into the Northeast. We were well below average in parts of the Dakotas. But here's your overall snow and portions of the Southeast definitely missed out on the snow this year. So here's the latest, uh, the 90 day outlook for uh, precipitation. So we've been predominantly dry uh, out west and in, into the desert southwest. We've been below average in parts of the south. The only areas that we are above average for those 90 days since uh, December the 19th, uh, we are in midsection of the country. So sporadically, we had some above average rainfall uh, for the last uh, 90 days. So. What's gonna happen going forward? So this is your first day of spring. We have been in predominantly a weak La Nina, and that has actually been trending uh, closer to an Enzo neutral that we kind of talked about with that dip in the Southern Oscillation Index. Uh, and then the Climate Prediction Center, the latest outlook now actually has a transition, a 60% chance of a transition into a little bit more of a, an Enzo neutral uh, pattern as we go into uh, the spring months of April, uh, May and as well as June. So now let's kind of take you what, what's going to happen this week. So there's actually going to be two systems that's coming in out west. That's going to bring some much colder uh, temperatures uh, out, out in the Pacific Northwest and the western part. The first trough is not going to be nearly as strong. That dives down on Monday, uh, Sunday into Monday. That digs all the way down to the deep south and that'll lift up, elevating those uh, higher winds. But by the time we get into Wednesday, Thursday time frame, those winds really get cranking and that lift, that jet stream dives a lot deeper than the first one. That'll create the possible uh, severe weather setup uh, going from Wednesday into Thursday. So we'll kind of go over that. So let's kind of walk you through uh, what's happening this morning. This is uh, March the 20th and I kind of expanded the view to kind of give you a, a big picture. We've got widespread 70s out here in the Caribbean, even 57 coming in at Miami. So it's definitely cold for them and uh, 20s up here into uh, parts of uh, New England. And, uh, you know, up here we got sporadic uh, 30 degree temperatures, 39 in Denver, uh, 45 up here in uh, Seattle. So it's a it's a cooler morning, especially into uh, Los Angeles here. So as we kind of take you through the week, I mean, here's later on the day. Here's the latest uh, uh, sea surface uh, map, uh, the surface map that's happening later on the day. That's going to actually bring a trough into the Pacific Northwest. You can see it's definitely high and dry out here in the midsection of the country. It was very active, so that system has since pulled off the coast. Now our attention turns out to west, where they're gonna have a, a, a developing trough, and that's gonna bring some colder temperatures and bring the snow back into uh, parts of uh, Idaho, getting into uh, Wyoming as well. And if we expand the view and extend it, extend it out through uh, later on into Sunday, Sunday morning, that's actually going to bring some snow uh, back in the picture in places of the Colorado Rockies, especially in the Denver. So there's going to be more snow. They've been in a drought for a while, and they're getting a lot of snow in a big wake in uh, uh, March, and they're just going to be adding to those totals uh, as we go uh, throughout the week. So looks, let's look at the temperatures for uh, Sunday morning. This is your Sunday, March 21st uh, temperatures. You can definitely see it's the chills still in the air down south at 45 here in, in Dallas, uh, 30s, 30s in the southeast, even even some 30s in uh, Wisconsin. We got some you know, freezing temperatures hanging on into uh, portions of the northeast, definitely chillier in uh, Florida. And then there's where that colder temperatures are going to filter in throughout the week into the Pacific Northwest as, as we got two troughs uh, coming in 
uh, throughout the week. It's going to be colder temperatures. So that first trough, that's going to be digging a little bit further south, elevating those uh, snows into uh, portions of uh, Denver. That's going to start creeping into uh, portions of New Mexico uh, by the time we get into uh, later in the day on Monday. But that's also going to set the stage where uh, we're going to have some rain uh, filtering into parts of uh, Texas, especially like in uh, Dallas. You know, getting into Oklahoma, getting into uh, portions of uh, Kansas as well. And there has there is a little bit of an instability with it. You can definitely see as you get into Monday morning, these temperatures start to rise just a little bit uh, higher, about 10 degrees warmer than they were previously the, uh, the day before. And that's going to create uh, the instability. Uh, going forward into Monday, the Storm Prediction Center has already highlighted a marginal chance of uh, possibly uh, uh, severe weather going into Monday afternoon for portions of uh, Dallas, getting into Oklahoma. These are probably going to just gonna be elevated storms, uh, you know, bringing some small hail and some uh, gusty winds with, the, with that system that's coming across because there's not terribly too much instability with it. Um, as we go through the day on Tuesday, that same system will lift uh, northeast. That'll uh, lift the north, the rain into portions of uh, uh, Kansas, getting into Nebraska, parts of uh, Missouri by then, and Arkansas, and going into uh, Iowa as well, with more snow on the backside into uh, Utah as well as uh, Colorado. And let's look at the temperatures for Tuesday morning. You can definitely see uh, that trough is a little bit further south. I mean, you've got freezing temperatures. Everything in blue here is all, all freezing, below freezing for your uh, Tuesday morning, March 23rd temperatures. But you can definitely see this warm surge uh, out ahead of it uh, where they were, we're going to get that lift. And some of the 60s are starting to creep back in into uh, Louisiana and portions of the southeast as uh, well. So... Let's kind of take you through the day on Wednesday. So as that system pulls down, it's got some very cold air with it. I mean, that second system does, and that pulls it all the way down into New Mexico. So yeah, we're talking places like, you know, Santa Fe, places like Albuquerque are gonna be bringing some snow uh, by then. And out ahead of it, you can definitely see, we're gonna be tapping into some of those warmer temperatures into Texas and the Southeast. Uh, well, that's going to be elevating the, the rain and possibly the severe threat by then as that first system moves up into parts of the north central U.S. with some snow into parts of uh, South Dakota as well as uh, Minnesota. As we get into the day, uh, here's your here's your Tuesday or Wednesday morning temperatures. And like I mentioned, you can definitely see the warm surge out ahead of it. Now we're talking 60, 65 degrees in Louisiana. So on, on the back side, that's your colder temperature. So predominantly it's going to be well below average for portions of uh, the western part of the U.S. And then as we creep into the central and especially going to the south and southeast, we're going to be trending above average uh, th you know, throughout the week. So as we go into the day on Wednesday, these are your higher temperatures on Wednesday. Uh, you can definitely see the warm surge uh, out ahead of it. Now we're talking, you know, 70s, 75 degree high temperatures. There's going to be a, a, some more instability around and it has that split flow jet. And we could be talking uh, severe well, weather by then. And even the latest, uh, uh, you know, SIPS model of the, the, the GFS guidance has a highlighted chance of severe weather by the time we get into uh, Wednesday, uh, March the 24th, you know, for portions of uh, Arkansas getting into Louisiana, uh, into Mississippi and Alabama again. So we're definitely going to have to be on the lookout uh, for more uh, possible severe weather in that region by the time we get into the day on a Wednesday, because by the time we go into Thursday, that same system continues uh, pushing across into the southeast. That's going to bring some well above average rainfall. We're talking portions, even possibly flooding, flooding rains, uh, getting into uh, Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama as that as that lift will surge, surge to the northeast, and that just will be all rain into the Ohio Valley, into the Mid Atlantic, and portions of uh, Wisconsin, uh, getting into uh, Michigan here as uh, well. So. As we go into the day on uh, Thursday afternoon, you can definitely see out ahead of it, yeah, there's your warm surge, and that's where they're gonna have that instability. That's possibly that severe weather threat, again, that we've been kind of highlighting uh, coming up on the day on uh, Thursday. So here's your, those are your high temperatures uh, for Thursday. And again, the latest uh, guidance has uh, for Thursday, the 
the 25th time frame, Dixie Alley event, possibly again, going into portions of the Southeast, the Tennessee Valley, uh, getting into Kentucky again. So a lot of these same areas will probably be under the gun again for possible uh, severe weather threat as they were last week, uh, you know, going forward. So as we go into the day on uh, Friday, here's your Friday morning low temperatures. And you can definitely see again where that instability is and out ahead of it. Those lower temperatures still hang tight into the southeast, getting along the, along the Carolina coast as that colder, those colder temperatures stay true for the, uh, the off the west with those uh, below average temperatures for, for much uh, of the week. So yes, as we go into uh, Friday morning, you can definitely see the warm surge out ahead of it where they're tapping into some of those warmer temperatures. Going to be all rain, you know, either se severe threat. And as you get up into the, you know, c closer into the Northeast, there's not going to be a severe threat. It's going to be basically all rain into uh, parts of the Mid-Atlantic and getting into uh, the Northeast. But on the back side, again, we have yet another system coming in for portions of the Colorado Rockies getting into Denver again with even more snow for them by the time we get into uh, parts of uh, Friday. And you can see the temperatures by even next Saturday morning, your low temperatures, how they've rebounded and you're going to be ab above average uh, predominantly for portions of the southeast getting into uh, to the northeast as those below average temperatures uh, stay stay uh, colder uh, throughout the week. And that just continues uh, possibly into uh, next Saturday as well. As yet that same system, yeah, will be dumping more snow over the, a lot of the same areas into uh, Colorado, getting into uh, you know parts of the Dakotas uh, again. So with some, even some more snow uh, by that time frame. So, Here's the latest uh, precipitation outlook for the for the next uh, seven days. You can definitely see where you those warmer temperatures you're going to be able to tap into, and a lot of that instability. Yeah, we're talking some very heavy rain uh, right out here along the coast of uh, Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama, and parts of uh, Georgia getting into the Carolinas. So this is going to be the area of concern for not only severe weather but flooding rains as well uh, for a good chunk of the week. And they will kind of modify a little bit as they extend into the mid-atlantic and get in the northeast and the, uh, the pacific northwest remains active but unfortunately it's pretty high and dry for much of uh, california into the desert uh, desert southwest uh this this week but where that instability is and where those two troughs are going to come together in that split flow jet that's going to create those higher winds so here's your wind gust over the next uh, seven days you can definitely see a lot of the areas are going to be having the elevated winds over the four corners regions, uh, getting into parts of uh, New Mexico into West Texas. But where that split is along along that jet, that's where you can have those elevated uh, winds of, uh, you know, 50, 60 mile per hour in, por in portions of, uh, you know, Georgia here getting into the Carolinas as we go up into the mid-Atlantic states as that, as that low continues to move up uh, off the coast. And here's your snow uh, for the next uh, seven days. Yeah, you can definitely see where those colder temperatures are gonna be coming into play and then where that uh, those two troughs are. And yeah, we're talking heavier snows in parts of the Pacific Northwest, especially getting into to Idaho and Wyoming. Yeah, Colorado's gonna be picking up a lot of heavy snow, especially into Denver with possibly two events coming up in the next uh, seven days. And it definitely decreases as as it gets into uh, portions of uh, minnesota and uh, heavier snows as it gets into canada but not much of any far as snow category into the southeast and the mid-atlantic and, and the northeast for the next uh, seven days so uh, hey i appreciate you guys uh, watching do like this video definitely leave your comments below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel to catch the latest update where i protect you before and after the storm